Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to show you how to use the VBA call stack. The call stack is included in the VBA editor but only a tiny percentage of people actually use it. And this is a pity because it's very simple to use but it can provide some very powerful results. Now if you enjoyed this video then please click on the like button below and if you'd like to get notified of my upcoming videos then click on the subscribe button. So let's get started by looking at what is the call stack. So the call stack is used when we're stepping through the code. So if we go to the view menu, you can see that we've got the four items here. We've got immediate window, locals window, watch window, and then the call stack, which is currently disabled. Now these are all used when we're stepping through the code or debugging the code as we would also call it. And the call stack, it's only available while we're actually stepping through the code. Now let's have a look how to use it. So if we take this code here and we step to this code, so we use F8 to step to one line at a time. And when we use F8, if we reach another sub that's been called, the code will actually go into this sub. Now, if we view the call stack at this point, and we can use Control L for the shortcut, you can see the call stack appears. Now, what we notice here is that the call stack, it has the last sub that we went into at the top, and then it has the previous one below and so on. So that's the reason it's called a stack. So let's have a look at an example of the way that a stack works. So the way the call stack works basically mirrors a real world stack. So imagine that we've got a stack of plates. So every time we add a plate to the stack, the plate gets added on top. And then every time we want to take a plate, we basically take the plate from the top. And this is exactly how it works in VBA. The call stack, every time we get a new sub, the new sub gets added to the top of the stack and then when we leave that sub, the sub gets removed from the stack. So now that we know how the stack works, let's have a look at a stepping through code and seeing how things get added to the call stack. So let's look at a more clear example that I have already here. So here we're in a module. The module is called module two and it's part of our project. So let's change the project name. So you can see over on the left hand side, our project is called VBA project. And normally most people don't change this, but we can change the project name by going to tools and we go to VBA project properties. And we can change this to anything we like. So I'm gonna just call it my stack project. And we click okay. And you can see that it appears over on the left. Now let's step through the code. We step into the first item now let's look at the view stack and you can see that we have my stack project, which is the workbook dot module two, which is the module dot main where main is the sub. So we can see exactly from this where we are in our code. So let's step into the create report all. And now you can see on the call stack that it has create report all on top. So remember it's put on top of the stack. And you can see that we have my stack project module two and create report all. So we can see exactly where the code is here. Now, one thing that we want to keep in mind when using the call stack is that it's, it's what we call modal. And what this means is that when the stack is up on the screen, we can't access Excel or we can't access the code. It's basically taken over the application while it's visible. So this is one kind of disadvantage of the call stack, but generally speaking, when we use it, we can easily bring it up just using control L and we can easily close it. Now let's step again into our third sub. And when we look at the call stack at this point, you can see that we've got display worksheet at the top. Now, as I said, you can ignore the non-basic code. This is code that VBA does and it's not really useful to have it here because we can't access it and it doesn't matter really. Now, one thing that we can do with the call stack is we can pick one of the subs where we are and see exactly where we were called from. So what I mean by this is we want to see where display worksheet was called. So we go to the one below it, create report all, and we double click. And you can see that we've got a green triangle on the left hand side. And this is showing us the line where we called the current sub. Now, if we bring up the call stack again, and we go up to the top again, let's go to main you can see that it puts the green line beside there. 
so we can see exactly where it was called from. So this is a very useful point of using the call stack because it allows us to see where exactly the sub was called from. And we can go there directly by just double clicking on it, as I said. So this is very, very useful in debugging. So one thing that is very important to understand is when the call stack is available. So the call stack is available whenever you're paused in the code. So there's really three scenarios where this happens. So the first one we've looked at is where we step through the code from scratch and we press F8 and this allows us to step through the code. But in reality, if we're dealing with a lot of code, what we would do is we put a breakpoint somewhere like this. We click in the left or press F9 and then we'd run our code until it stops here. Because if we have a big application, we don't want to step through every line of code until we get to the important line. So we press F5, the code pauses here, and because we're paused in the code, we can do Control L and we can see our call stack. So that's the second way we're, we're in the code and the second way that we can see the call stack. Now, the other way of pausing in the code happens when an error occurs. So let's imagine an error occurs here. We'll say, let's just call an error. So I'm just gonna call error 13. So this is just a simple function that creates an error. So error 13, and now when I run the code, it will give me the type mismatch error. Now at this point, VBA offers you the option, do you wanna end or debug? And if we click on debug, it will pause on the line with the error, and then again, we're paused in the code so we can look at the view stack. And we can see exactly, we got an error here, which one of our subs called it and the current position that we're in. So let's have a look at one more example, just to make sure that you're clear on the advantages of using the call stack. So imagine we have a sub send email and sometimes there's problems in the sub. So what we can do is put a breakpoint in the sub and we can run the code. So we run the code, it pauses here, and now we can see, okay, we're having a problem with the send email, but where exactly are we calling it from? So we bring up the call stack and then we double click the one that calls it, which is test, and it goes to this line. So you can see this is the one with the problem. Now, in other cases, what happens is when, when we don't find Apple, what happens is we're going to be performing some other tasks here and then we're going to be sending the email. So the behavior is very, very different. So it's very important to know which sub called our current sub because in reality, if we're using a big application, then send email could be called from many different places. So it's very important to know where it was called from and the preceding steps that happened before it was called. And once we know this, then we have enough information if we want to update the code or we're trying to fix a particular error. So this is the video on the call stack. I hope you found it useful. If you're debugging code or maintaining your code, then I think that you'll find the call stack is invaluable when you want to find out exactly what's going on with your code. Now, if you like this video, please click on the like button below. And if you'd like to get notified of my upcoming videos, then please click on the subscribe button. And if you've got any thoughts, comments, or queries, please add them to the comments section below. Hope to see you on the next video.